You know, I had this wonderful idea, this wonderful, wonderful concept of a creation that could not possibly go wrong. It came to be in a beautiful dream, overflowing with happiness. What could possibly go wrong with building an entire art program in Trail Makers? So that's what I've been doing this week. Temple OS has nothing on my level of insanity, my level of insanity. So if you think about it, art programs are actually like really, really basic. They have really like two functions, three maybe. That is having a brush that you can move around on the screen and then having a way to choose a color and then put that color on the screen. That is it. And ultimately, each of those steps is, relatively speaking, quite simple. And in fact, most parts of a computer and most systems that run on a computer when simplified, are also incredibly simple. It's just that making them takes like six years, but that's okay. Um, so, yeah, this was my attempt at making a functional version of an art program, which I will henceforth revert, uh, refer to as MS Paint, because that's the one that I use. And yes, I do use MS Paint regularly for my thumbnails. So, the first part of it was pretty basic. As you could see, I was just trying to get a cursor working on the screen, not even really a brush yet. So as you can see, I have these accumulators and then they're linked into these offset, these addition blocks, which provide a small offset for the value in the accumulator and then equal blocks. And then I just use AND gates to print that to the screen uh, for X and Y axes you know, up and down and left and right. It's a little bit hard to explain how I actually go about selecting like a pixel on the screen, but hopefully these number values show you. The accumulator adds and subtracts to the things in the addition block. And as the things in the addition block hit zero, they that becomes the quote unquote selected set of pixels. So that's pretty much how it works. So as you move it around, the accumulator adds and subtracts to all of the addition blocks, which means that one of the addition blocks is always a selected pixel. It's, it's a little bit weird to explain, but that's how it works. Um, hopefully the number displays show you what it means a little bit better than how I'm explaining it, but that's the gist of it, and it's really quite simple. So the MS Paint 2 version, um, basically I swapped out the equals, uh, stuff for greater than and less than gates and an AND gate to link those two things together. The reason why is because this was the start of being able to choose your brush size. If I had a bigger difference in the greater than or less than, it would change the amount of pixels that are being selected. And this is really just a proof of concept for that. I will say that I really don't like the way that logic was implemented. There are so, so, so many little bugs and things that I really don't like about the way that were implemented into trial makers. For example, on the numbers display, it says you have the option to round stuff. Disclaimer, it doesn't round stuff. It's only so that the display is rounded, but the output from it is not rounded. Why did they do this? Who knows? And the other thing, um, you can't add two accumulators together. You can only add constants. You can only multiply by constants. Yes, there are very complicated ways to get around that, which use a lot more logic gates to make a lot more of a complete system where you can make much more advanced forms of math. But frankly, that's unnecessary. Why don't the devs just let us add what we want to add. Why do they put this unnecessary restriction? Who knows? Anyway, it is what it is. So that's about it for MS Paint 2. Um, the third one I have saved used, this one actually could change the things. Uh, specifically, it fed the accumulators into the offsets for the uh, main up and down accumulator which then changed, basically scaled the entire screen. 
Um, wasn't exactly effective. Had a few, not bugs per se, but had a few issues. Like if you had your mouth, like when you increase the brush size, it shifts the ma the brush away from zero zero. Um, and also, yeah, as I said, as you could see, no more addition blocks because you know I can't change on the fly the amount that I'm adding. Um, I can only do that with OR gates, which automatically mix whatever decimals uh, get placed into it and automatically add or subtract them depending on if they're negative or positive. So ironically, addition blocks actually work worse for addition in a lot of cases. Um, another interesting thing in this version is that uh, you start getting to see really interesting bugs. One of the fun things to do whenever you have something that runs recursively or is like repeating in parallel is to introduce a small bug or a feedback loop or something because then it always propagates through all the other things and it always makes it look very interesting. For example, if I swap the brush size to negative in this case, it flips the entire screen around and it flips the controls, flips the size, all of that stuff. And another example would be if I mess around with the brush size and what point it starts at it, I can actually get it to draw stuff symmetrically. And if you do the same thing on the final version, it does actually allow you to have four cursors that are centered on zero, zero. So you can draw like symmetrical patterns. You can't turn it back off again, but you know, it is what it is. So that was really the basics of the brush system. As I said, the core systems of an art program are like, as a concept, stupid easy to uh, build. It's just that putting it all together later is very annoying. So the next one I built was just a system to import colors because that was going to be the next issue. Just had some more AND gates so that when uh, to check if a pixel was selected and to then mix in the color value selector, which is also queuing and using an accumulator. When you click, it inputs the color. The most interesting thing about this in my eyes is the fact that it takes one input from one accumulator and runs it into a different accumulator. Um, they have to be at a very specific ratio of like inputs and like the amount of time that you input it because when you click it only inputs it for like a single frame or whatever or whatever unit of time I used. So it has to be this very, very specific input strength on both of them and output strengths. So it's a, it's a little bit wacky and a lot of the time it gets the color off by like 0 0.01, but it's close enough. Um, and then the other thing would be that because uh, the AND gates and because the thing to con when you click, it runs a signal from another gate into the AND gate to confirm it. And the AND gate, when the cursor is hovering over those gates, that AND gate is also constantly providing an input to the other AND gate, which is used for coloring stuff. What this means is that you end up having to have two extra gates running into the thing, um, but that would interfere with the amount of color and what color is flowing in. So they're set to 0 0.01 and negative 0 0.01 to cancel each other out. And even if they don't completely cancel each other out, they're still 0 0.01. So the error is pretty much either one, not there, or two, worst case scenario, it's not even noticeable if uh, I forgot to link up one of the sections. So that's how I preserve the color during the transfer. And yeah, the, that basically proved the concept of being able to very easily transfer colors. Then just I had to make an eraser button. While yes, you could add more colors over the old colors. So if the first color value you put in was like 0 0.5, and if the next color value, and if you wanted to erase it, you could just input a value of negative 0 0.5. But I wanted to have like an easy just eraser button that just wipes everything that you click on. Because frankly, having to do math to erase something would have been way too user unfriendly. Not like this thing would have been like any more usable anyway, but like whatever. So basically the way that the wiping system works is first it drops everything to negative one 
and it pulls it back as far as it can till all the gates hit the value of negative one. Once they do hit that value, it just adds a single pulse to raise it back up to the zero point, and that's how it centers it. And then we get into the connection hell. I don't, I don't even want to talk about it. It was bad. It turns out that having to connect an obscene amount of logic gates can and will decrease your sanity. Just do not recommend. D don't build anything this big, please. For your own sanity, it's just a bad idea. And if you do, Please, for the love of God, do what I did, which still took way too long. Uh, but save the repeating chunks of the system that you have. In this case, I used these shards, or like these blueprint chunks, where they were all already connected. And then from those chunks, you just have to take them out of blueprints, put them onto your creation, and then just link those chunks to the creation instead of having to build those chunks from scratch every single time. It doesn't help by that much, still took way too long, but it made it actually bearable instead of literal insanity. MS Paint 4. Um, yeah, here you could see the hell brick in its final form. No outputs yet, but it's just the raw logic gates. And as you could see, this is one solid chunk of logic gates. When I said this thing took a lot, I mean I meant it took a lot. In MS Paint 5, uh, this is with all the LED panels. All the stuff from the logic gate section, which means including LED panels, including number displays, and including logic gates, and including accumulators, greater than, less than gates, all of those combined. That is 418 blocks. So, yes, in theory, I could expand it. However, if it took me way too many hours to complete just 418, I don't even want to think about how much com how much of my sanity it would take to make something that's actually like 16 by 16 pixels instead of just a mere 8 by 8 pixels. It would just take way too much time. And frankly, I don't even want to try. So um, in version 6, it's just a version 5, but more user friendly. Same thing, same concept, just had, just uh, set the things to white that you need to actually pay attention to, like the color selector and the brush size. Um, it didn't actually patch out the thing with the negative brush size, so just like, don't do that, I guess. Um, and by the way, you can change your horizontal and vertical brush size separately, so you can have a very long but thin cursor, um, which, I mean... I don't know, it's just another neat feature. I probably could because I can set the accumulators to like only go to positive 0 0.1 and not negative 0 0.1. And I do have the ones that need to go to the positive. And I do have the ones that add, the ones that subtract as two separate sets of accumulators. So I actually very much probably could set them up like that and patch out that bug. But again, at this rate, I'm too lazy. There still are two more bugs left in the system. One, the second row doesn't work. Why? I have no clue. It's not in the actual pixels displaying the issue. It's in like this group of logic gates, which actually input it. But I, I, I'm just not gonna debug it. Uh, I think like another random gate is probably inputting a signal somewhere along here, but. I'm not going to go through all the logic gates and find that one. And the other bug is that whenever I try to paint something, uh, there's this one pixel that always gets the input as well for some reason, which again, I just don't want to deal with right now. It's just taking too much of my sanity. So yes, I made MS Paint in Trail Makers. I will be uploading, maybe not all of them. Um, probably most of these creations that I showed, just that so you can follow along yourself, dissect them, do as you want. And that's about it. So yeah, this was my latest bout of insanity. Um, goodbye, I guess.